Hey y'all, welcome back to Zine Cuisine, my lovely cuisine stirs. It has been a pinch, I'm not gonna lie. Um, with all this COVID-19 coronavirus stuff, I have been working through it and I didn't realize how much of a mental impact it would have on like stress and everything, trying to figure out, am I going to get sick? Um, is this going to be something that's, you know, is it going to affect me somehow? And honestly, I haven't had the energy, the pure energy to even do anything. I really haven't. Um, I maybe made one zine during this, but I've been working like literally six days a week. Um, so it's not like I've had, like, I haven't been quarantined at all. Like, I get Sunday off and the evenings and the mornings. In the mornings, I have been doing things like painting the house, like painting the, painting the kitchen, um, reorganizing arbitrary crap. Um, and like I said, I made one little mini zine. But through it all, um, we have gotten some mail in. And one I actually sent away for from, and this episode is about, is Quimby's Books in Chicago, Illinois. And I believe there's also one in New York, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I got to actually have an interview with the lovely, lovely, lovely person who is literally holding the fort down. Um... And I want to share the interview with you, but also what 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 they are doing at Quibi's, which is really cool, is they are sending, they're doing priority envelopes. And the priority envelopes are like, you tell them what your interests are in zines. And for, I think it's like $25, they send you a major, like, cool pack of different things like um different zines and whatnot so i'm going to share with you before i post the interview um what we got going on um another little like side note i don't want anybody feeling like they have to produce something every day of the week if they're being quarantined the stress of all this that's been going on is insurmountable um a lot of us don't have extra income coming in. Let's see what we got from Quimby's. So first thing I pulled out is Pulp Odyssey. Um, Pulp Odyssey is really cool. Um, I think I'm going to switch over and do it on a, um, a, a background. So hold on one second. All right. So first thing I got was Pulp Odyssey. And this is like almost like a, f <laughs> I don't want to say fake news because I really hate even saying that, but it's like an alternative news like throughout the galaxy. And I really love this. This is a lot of fun. It is on actual print and it is a really cool like open um, print thing. And I, you know, I keep forgetting that you can get things printed right here like this um, with the staff, which is really cool on how they do this whole Respect letters to the editor and some of these like letters from kidnapped queen bot services letters to the editor one really <laughs> That really got me dear editor. I feel enraged that the author has not acknowledged the rise of artificial intelligence and the robots obvious abilities to learn themselves This uh, it cracked me up like for a good a good 10 minutes <laughs> I laughed at that one because I have gotten to look at this first so don't don't mind me um, this is literally want to make a zine. Here's a zine template. This is a great way to do a half page zine. This is really cool. Picture goes here. You know, it's kind of like a little, um, boom, boom, boom. You know, it, it's, it, it's a great tutorial. I think this is a good way to start. Um, if you're a beginner and this is going to be in probably the make a zine package, I'm going to make five packages. This is going to be in one of them. Um, this one's called 92 Miles, a bike trip mini zine. And this is really cool. I love mini zines, like, like mad. I mean, this, this is one of my favorite formats because they're so small, but you can do so much with them. This is one page. Um, and there's, you know, it's all hand drawn, hand lettered. And on the other side, 
was a really cool picture of before and after, in a way, um, of two different times. And how everybody's happy at one point, and then, uh, maybe not so. So, it's really cool. And, um, again, you know, mini zines are great because they don't take up a lot of room, and it's only one piece of paper. So, this is the kind of stuff you can get at Quimby's, which is really cool. Um, so that's 92 miles. Hmm. Poutine zine. I love poutine. I love poutine. I love poutine so much. It is, um, like steak fries with cheese curds and gravy, and it is the bomb. Um, this is beautiful three color process, um, zine on Rizzo, and it's with, um, orange fluorescent orange, I think. No, no, they they made that. They did overlay. They did fluorescent pink and fluorescent yellow, and then they did overlay so you can get that orange, which is really cool. Half toning is great. Um, I saw this one on their list, and I asked her for it. I'm like, I need this. I got a nice little note. Uh, P.S. I threw this copy of Caboose number 11 from my own reserves. as a thanks for having me on the show. And you know what? I'm saving this note, too, so... Um, here's Caboose, and oh my goodness, it's a cute little kitten. And I love, look at this, Lost Lessons. This is really important, and yeah, Liz is really cool. So, um, I believe Caboose you can get there, and you can choose some of the things. If you have specific ones you want for that, um, you know, that you can do that, which is great. So you can pick up a, a copy of Caboose, um, on the Quimby's website and you know the really cool thing is you can do a zoom interview with with her and she will help pick out things that maybe you don't have or you never would have thought of and it's really cool so I love this it's a half page black and white it looks like laser copy so you know it's it's really a good durable format for so many things and I cannot stress how much more info you can put in a half page than you can in a one of these. I mean, I list one of my favorite formats, but when I have a lot of information, I always tend to go to a half letter page because it just makes more sense. All right, what else did I get in here? Ugly Duckling Press, new and forthcoming select backlist. This is really cool, and it is a catalog, um, which is neat. Um, and you know, a lot of different things like some poetry and stuff in here, which is really cool. And I have not gotten to really look over this all too, too much. I've been stuck in my own, um, my own id, so to speak. So, uh, I've not really gotten to totally look at this, but it is beautiful. And, um, I believe that is two color cover, thinner paper. Um, I think that's like just process palm printed. And it's really cool, though, because the colors are neat. And I might end up passing that one on. Um, plant Parenthood was something I kind of said I wanted stuff about plants. I am a plant parent. I love plant. And I just love the double entendre with the name Plant Parenthood. You know, Plant Parenthood. And I believe this is a bestseller. And I can see why. Because look at this. Look at these. Look at these plants. I have killed a lot of plants, so I'm going to use this because it's super important to me on, oh my goodness, and there's a DIY. A DIY hanging planter um, at a macrame or whatever cord you have. Paracord works really well, too. Uh, meditation. Let's see. Look at this. Science stuff, too. I like it. And honestly... Major props to handwriting the whole thing because I would have already like changed my handwriting five different times at that point. Um, and it's really cool. And I think that this is, yeah, it's a, it's a bestseller. I can see why because this is a good thing to have on your plant shelf. Stitching time. This is cool. I did ask for DIY stuff and this is one of them. Check it out. And this is all about like the history and like sewing and all this stuff and some medical stuff, which is really cool. And so I guess they're stitching up. Oh, look at that. That's good. Um, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> um, I do love it. And there's actually like historical stuff in there. And you know, history zines are like a thing. And um, that's a whole like subgenre. 
And uh, this is really cool because this is historical, this is really neat, and it's about medical, and there's a little bit of grossness to it, which I love. I love gross things, so I'm not going to lie. Roasting coffee at home, an intro. This is cool. Like I said, I did want a lot of foodie things, and this is pretty neat. Um, I've never thought about ro roasting coffee, and I'm probably going to try this sometime. I'm getting a new... Um, Dave and I are getting a new, uh, toaster oven soon, because our other one had died, and it's a, um, convection, so I kind of want to try roasting my own beans, maybe if I can get some, like, raw ones, that'd be really neat. I'll probably screw it up, though, and the whole house will smell like burnt coffee for, like, ever, but I guess Starbucks smells like that, and I like that, so whatever. Um, so that's really cool, I mean, I got a lot of really cool things, I think totally worth the money, um, especially because I can't go to any zine fest right now, so I've been taking it to online and buying and trading zines there, so that's really cool. That's just some of the really cool things that um, I got out of there. I have some more mail, and I don't know if you can see, hold on, that, um, that box right there is full of a bunch of things I need to go through, and I just haven't, I just haven't brought myself to doing a lot of reviews because I don't know I just didn't have the energy. I did get something else in the mail before I post this interview um and it's really interesting it's an older book and if you can find a copy I know I've seen many on eBay um a couple on Amazon I think um and a few here and there I think maybe a used bookstore keep your eyes open for it but this is from like 1992 so this is like the height of like, a lot of really interesting zines were coming out in the early 90s, late 80s. Um, and that's when I first got into zines, was in the 90s, because I am old. Well, not really that old, I guess. I'm going to be 39 this year, and I have no problems about saying that. So, um, this book right here is from Penguin, and it's called The World of Zines. It is a really cool book. I want to do some more... Um, if anybody out there knows how to get uh, a hold of maybe some old fact sheet five zines, I would love to maybe get some scans so I can talk about it. Um, I don't, I had one back in like 91 or 92, I think I found. And um, it's been a long, long time. I've lost those since then. Um, but if anybody can get a hold of Mike Underloy or Carrie Goldberg Janice, I would love to talk to them. I would love to talk to them and ask them about this book, um, about what they think about zine as a almost permaculture at this point. Um, and that'd be cool. So without further ado, though, uh, this is wonderful, wonderful interview. And I think anybody needs to go to Quimby's and get one of these corn zine packs. I think they are amazing. A great great value for what you're paying and it's shipped to you priority so you're gonna get it within a couple days to your mailbox go out there in your jammies and sanitize the mailbox after if you want i don't think that you're gonna have a problem um and get your mail so you can get zines to your door sound cool sounds cool also stay tuned for um there is a bulletin board that I've been putting up, and if you please have any information, any deadlines, if you want to have any submissions for a zine project, or anything else you want me to put on the, um, the wonderful bulletin board that I started, please do. Just send it to me. I will put it on there. Um, I think it's pretty cool, and I want it to be a... Uh, like a community kind of effort because we are a community. Um, without further ado, here we go. And bon appetit, my lovely cuisinesters. I've missed you and look forward to more episodes because I finally got, got right with my head. <laughs> Have a good one. Peace. Welcome back to Zine Cuisine. We are going to do a great little interview with Quimby's Bookstore, one of my to-do lists once I ever get to that part of the country. It'll happen someday, I swear. So I'm going to go ahead and let our wonderful guest today introduce herself and tell us all about Quimby's. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Liz Mason. Um, I work at Quimby's Bookstore here in Chicago. And I've been working here since 2001. 
right now during uh, COVID operations, um, I am the sole remaining employee uh, of the manager still, uh, I'm the manager, but the owner is still, uh, you know, here a little bit to help make sure the place hasn't burnt down and, <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, we've been around since 1991. Um, the, our location used to be a few miles south. Now we are a few blocks away from our former location. Um, we're still in Wicker Park. Uh, we still uh, maintain the mission statement of the original founder. His name is Stephen, and he opened a Quimby's in Brooklyn as well uh, back in 2016, which is still there. Um, and uh, the, the general um, sort of mission statement was to sell weirdo publications and independently published stuff um zines comics and the like which um, we hear zine cuisine love <laughs> excellent <laughs> um so uh right now we're close to the public but we're still doing uh, mail order and um i'm still here monday through friday to accept boxes and fill mail orders and kind of remind the public that we're still there put stuff up on our website and the like so. which is really important right now agreed <laughs> <laughs> so um you d definitely said that you uh do like weirdo books and zines and all that um do you find that the our community of zinesters and comic artists and writers and illustrators that right now is like probably like one of the scariest times because we can create all this stuff because we have yeah. all this time but there's no real way for us to sell this and shops like yours that are remaining open via online is a great thing, but all of our zine fests, all that stuff is dried up right now. Yeah. <gasps> Do you find it is a little more difficult? Do you see any other zine stores that are having difficult with this whole transition of our new reality? Agreed. I think every kind of artist at any, in any medium is probably struggling with that, especially because if you're a part of a community that relies on um, occasionally getting together or um, feeding ideas off of each other, it's a little bit more difficult. I will say that there's been sort of an interest in a sort of resurgence in communication through writing now that everybody kind of has to rely on stuff digitally. Um, and it seems like people like myself, I, and I, I speak from the, because I publish my own stuff too as a zinester, that this has been fodder for writing and art. Like a number of sort of like ad hoc communities have risen up like digitally that uh, are sort of inspired by the fucked upness that is happening right now. You know, Amen. like anytime, yeah. Like anytime there's some kind of like national trauma, it's like, you know, like, the 2016 election and like suddenly there's like a gamut of like you know radical uh art being um manifested out in the world you know uh 9-11 lent itself to all sorts of art forms you know like any i mean and, and it feels very like uh, of that energy right now which creates a sort of nurturing energy i think in a way for people that make art that they want to sort of contribute to this kind of dialogue that's going on. Um, I feel like I'm writing more now than I ever have. Um, mm -hmm. Like I go home and I'm just like, I'm filling up journals and journal blanks. You know, I never fucking write in journals, you know, like, <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's just really interesting. And I was talking to a friend of mine in a similar zoom type of meeting and uh she said she showed me her journals that she was filling up and and you know it's just uh it's kind of fascinating um i have a group of friends that we get together occasionally to work on zines and we're like arranging like work on zine zoom meetings you know that kind of thing uh it's sort of fascinating to kind of see what kinds of things pop up so. there's definitely um most i guess you could say societal traumas do lend themselves to a very distinct chaotic energy within any creatives. And it's amazing to see regular people who just, you know, oh, we should cut funds of the arts, 
relying on artists to bring our, the light and the hope to them. And I'm seeing like musicians and all this, every, we're almost kind of like in a weird way thriving and sharing our art with other people. And that's kind of nice, even though it's a little weird right now. <laughs> yeah, it's super surreal. So um, Chris Ware, he, the comics artist who uh, is friends with the owner and he did a lot of our, um, our signs and our logo and all that stuff. He had a great comic um, on the New Yorker website some days ago uh, that it, it was like, he, he was like, this is like, okay, I'm paraphrasing. So pardon my paraphrasing, but he said, you know, wow, this is amazing. The cartoonists have won 30 years of self-isolation. My lifestyle has been vindicated. Also sports canceled. Have I gone to heaven? You know, like, like, you know, finally I can whip out the introvert t-shirt and wear it with pride, you know, like, uh, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's just creating a, a weird boom for art right now. Like, um, Just Seeds, the artist co-op, they offered online, you can download a bunch of their um, amazing street art-ish, graffiti-ish graphics for use. There's wow. multiple, yeah, multiple people making quarantines and posting them, like Mark Fisher, who Temporary Services, Half Letter Press, posting uh, his quarantines on uh, polls for people to read when they're out there by themselves, you know. I'm like, making one too. <laughs> yeah, it, everyone is. Everyone is. It's amazing. It it, 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 it's almost like therapy. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's art therapy. Yeah, totally. So, um, you said that you're also a zine, sir. Um, how far back into the zine culture do you go? I started making zines in the nineties. Woo -woo. Um, Same. I, yeah, I got into zines because uh, just getting into punk when I was in high school and also my parents were older than everybody else so I was always grounded <laughs> so it was me in my bedroom reading maximum rock and roll and understanding that I could send cash through the mail and get records and zines and stickers and just pen pals and just weird shit and that was like my inroad to reading zines and then later making zines and still making zines my in was um through, through some through fanzines found fanzines because i'm a big sci-fi nerd but also um i'm almost 39 so that whole middle school high school early 90s femzine rock scenes that that was like i cut my teeth on those hardcore and then i made zines about talking about how crappy high school is and the whole situation uh, so yeah the, the early, there was a magical time with the early 90s zines where there was so underground and now seeing them have a boom right now what do you think about seeing so many zine fests and so many new zine stars it's, it's almost like refreshing yeah it's super refreshing but i live in a weird zine bubble because i've been working here for almost 20 years so for me, zines never went away. It's my every day, but like not, and also like I live half a mile away from where I work. So I'm really in a bubble. So <laughs> for me, zines never went away. They were always here. Uh, but I think for the rest of the world, that is definitely like, yes. they, they kind of went, got, got real big in the nineties. There was a boom even Publishers like Harper Collins were putting out zine anthologies of people, you know, doing, and then it kind of died down a little bit. Uh, and then it's sort of having a resurgence right now. Like um, that really awesome uh, book, uh, Moxie. Do you know the book Moxie? Mm -hmm. The author's name. Um, it's about like a high school girl making a zine. Um, I think Amy Poehler optioned it for a movie and is making a movie out of it. So like zines are really, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, uh, um, the fact that mini comics used to be a tiny shelf here, and, and by the way, when I say mini comics, I mean, I, I roughly translate that to like the zines of the comics world. Um, so when I say mini comics, and I say that, the, that our selection used to be maybe like a shelf this big, now it's an entire fucking wall, you know? Yes. Um, and it's like, you know, so like, when I started here, like, I remember sitting down with like review zines, like back before Xerography Debt was Xerography Debt, it was called Xerox Debt, and then they had to change the name. But I remember sitting down with review zines like that and just writing to all the review people that have, or zines like Zine Guide, 
um, and writing or z and also zine world and even maximum rock and roll and broken pencil and any zine or magazine that had reviews of zines i would just write to everybody and they're like hey here's a consignment form send your stuff to quimby's we'll sell it for you and once it sells we'll give you 60 percent of the retail price and you designate the retail price and we still do consignment that way we still sell a lot of stuff that way and it's such a like winning um way such a, a good business model way better than like buying stuff up front because you don't lose any money on it so um so now like this place that all this is to say that this place is like covered in printed matter that's published by people just like you and me so yes. and it's wonderful <laughs> makes me so happy word yeah <laughs> So, um, since you're also a fan of zines, I would love you to show me your top five zines. Yes. And tell me about them. Well, gladly. Okay. So, and it's hard for me to choose just five. Exactly. And I also had to choose things that were in stock right now. <laughs> so, so, I just, I pulled up here. First, I'll show you just like an overview of, this is what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So, uh, first, I'm just randomly picking. Um, <clears throat> Behind the Zines by Billy Roberts, who sometimes also goes by the name Billy McCall and sometimes Billy Da Bunny. <laughs> um, former Chicagoan, now lives not in Chicago. And uh, it's a zine about zines. And so he has people who are zinesters write in and talk about their experiences and whatever nice. they want to write about. You know, like trade journal for the zinester. Full disclosure, I think I have a piece in this. This is the issue that I might have a piece in. Um, it's about how I'm like crowd soliciting people's opinions on most wanted and most unwanted characteristics in zines and then I'm gonna make those zines. Awesome. Um, next is uh, my former coworker, uh, Corinne Halbert. Um, uh, she's a wonderful uh, illustrator, fine artist, and comics maker. And this is uh, her zine, one of her comics, Cursed Woman. Um, she does a lot of stuff with horror and um, the like. Um, it's usually pretty saucy. Um, and I just love her artwork. Um, and I miss her. Beautiful. Um, let's see what else. Oh, um, new issue of Comet Bus. And since Aaron Comet Bus only puts them out every couple of years, whenever a new one yes. comes out, it's like, fuck yeah. Um, and this issue is all about what happened to the underground. <laughs> so folk, and he interviews and, and sort of, uh, makes an analysis of the interviews that he does with people who in some way were related to underground culture and he asks them you know what plans did you make for the future if the underground bottoms out um and so he talks to folks that who run co-ops and comics publishers and you know that kind of thing on you know both coasts california and uh new york um and other places um and you know uh he used to do handwritten stuff now he's migrated into typing uh, mm -hmm. I, will, I, I will accept either because he's yeah. awesome. Um, and it was fascinating. Um, <clears throat> and and oh, by the way, the subtitle, this is issue number 59, subtotal, subtitle, uh, Postmortem. Nice. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, an apropos uh, subtitle, if there ever was one. Um, <clears throat> Brain Scan by Alex Reck. New issue. Love that one. Yeah, she's amazing. She runs Portland Button Works um, oh. and uh, is one of my favorite people. Also is a whiz on social media and posts hilarious things. Yes, um, she is. Yeah. Um, and so possibly uh, you've already talked about this zine on your uh, show if you're... I think we had brain scan number 32 and I, um, I actually put that one back out into the world. We had a a 100 subscriber contest and I let on, um, I sent that one out too. So it could go out in the world and make new people happy. <laughs> what kind of zines do you enjoy making? Uh, I do mostly, I mean, if you want to be a dork about giving it a even more specific title other than Perzine, I, I, I think of myself as being a creative nonfiction writer. So, uh, 
but that's just like a gross word for it. I mean, so basically just like ranting and raving or slice of life things or something that's on my mind and I write about it. I do a zine called Caboose and every issue is like a different theme. And the last issue that I put out uh, a few months ago, uh, I think I'm on issue 12, I think, um, was about jury duty because I had to serve a week long jury duty Ooh. at a Cook County court for a medical malpractice case. And it was fascinating. Um, so I wrote a zine about it. I love per zines. I love rant zines. Rant zines are some of my favorite. <laughs> yeah, same, same. There's, you really get to see somebody else's point of view, especially like an impassioned point of view. And you're like, I never really thought of it that way. But I, I, com I completely see that way. I, 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 can, I get it. I yeah. get it. So what are some of the best sellers um, as far as like um, styles of zine at Quimby's? Well, it depends on the moment um, and it depends on the zine. And I know this sounds like a total cop-out answer, but honestly, just uh, things that look good are reasonably priced, well-written. <laughs> but like, I mean, that, that is such a general specificity. And of course, it's very different general specificity. That's going to be the name of my next band or something. Um, Great name for a band. But, <laughs> but, um, but it just like, it's so contingent on so many things. Like, you know, like, is it, maybe it's not the most well-written thing, but the cover looks awesome. Or maybe it's uh, like a new issue of a zine. Like when Comet Bus comes out, that's always going to make the top 10 of the week. Although to be fair, top 10 of any week at Quimby's, because we have so much stuff, you really only need to sell like three copies of something and you're in the top 10. <laughs> But, you know, like, uh, right now, what I have noticed as of late that does seem to be a trend, come to think of it, though, is that um, very short, visually stunning comics have been selling. And I attribute that to the, our sort of Instagram mentality right now. Um, and uh, I enjoy those, of course, but they're not what I create. Um, so as someone who's a writer, you know, to me, it's like, mm, oh, shoo, <laughs> kick, kick the stone on the ground, you know, like, like I write things and people only want like, you know, like a tweet and a picture, you know, so it's like, so, but, you know, but like, maybe my audience isn't necessarily like the same audience that buys those comics or maybe my, you know, like everybody's audience is different, you know, so. Um, I've noticed the trend on that, especially going to SPX year after year, that there is um, the proportion of like written zines and informational zines. Most of them now have pictures and not just straight writing. Yeah. So it, it, maybe that's just the way that the, the tide's slightly turning. But I've even seen people who are just doing collages to add to their writing of just like a feeling or having their friend who's an artist kind of put up a couple of pictures and they just kind of visually give it a little bit of a extra push. Word. So maybe it's just like we're in that weird kind of visual state right now where we all have to be fronted with some sort of picture yeah. all the time. So we really are. I mean, yeah, Twitter, Instagram, everything's picture-based. Algorithms yeah. are picture-based. Maybe mental alg algorithms are too. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. I mean, I will admit that every issue of my zine, like, I try to have some type of graphic on every single page besides just the writing. Because I do under, like, because if I was just doing that, then why, then what's to separate me from just, like, publishing that on a blog somewhere, you know? So, like, I do try to make it be a little visually oriented. So maybe, and so you might be 100% right. Like, our mental logger, uh, algorithm, logarithm? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that that possibly we are sort of psychologically, mentally, chemically set up to want to see some type of like visual thing besides just words, you know. And that's sometimes just how it is. And um, major thanks to you for giving us a little tour of some of the some of the best books right now. Well, I say they're all best. Just saying, they're all awesome. Um, and giving us your own uh, point of view on the whole Z community, especially with this whole COVID-19 corn and zine fest stuff mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. Woo.
it's, it, it's definitely a trip. So thank you. Thank right. you. It was so nice to talk to you. You too.